Don't you just hate it when you want to play tic-tac-toe, but you can't find anyone to play against you? Me neither. And yet, now this exists. Artist. Poet. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam I am. And professional tic-tac-toe player. Oh, so close. So a few weeks back, I was thinking about what my next project should be. My wife suggested I make a robot that can play you in tic-tac-toe, and I said sure, because why not? After being trapped inside for months on end, my marbles is turning into mind and I could really just use a robot friend. So I not only designed a bot that plays tic-tac-toe, it's a bit passive-aggressive while doing so, Nice one, idiot. and has a few hidden features to ensure that it will always win. But first, if you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so now and hitting the bell. It helps show your support and grow the channel even quicker. I have a really ambitious goal to break 7,500 subs by the end of the year, so let's try and make that happen. Now back to the project. With the concept finalized, it was just a matter of getting to work in CAD. And a few hours later, I had this. The bot uses a two-joint SCAR arm, driven by stepper motors for the two-axis positioning. One stepper is pretty obvious, and the other is kind of nested inside that first arm, and drives an internal belt which is actually rotating that distal joint. There's also a third servo-driven screw axis to raise and lower that pen at the end. And finally, there's this swan-like camera bracket, which probably will give my camera a full view of the playing area. At least, I hope. And after a whole bunch of printing, I had all the parts I needed to start my build. Now, making it move. I could have just soldered up a proto board, but since custom PCBs just cost a few bucks, and because I'm crazy and overdo everything, I figured why not make my own custom PCB. It's a pretty simple breakout board design, basically just connecting an Adafruit feather with two stepper motors, a servo, and a few other bits, plus an audio amplifier and SD card slot, but those are for later. And then it was time to reflow my board in my janky home-built reflow oven. And then I wrote some code. Sorry, too fast? Don't worry, I'll come back to this later. First, let's test the PCB. Okay, let's pretend I tested the PCB. I forgot to actually record this, but it didn't work. Take my word for it. Long story short, I ordered this new header to play all my sound files, and had to do a little bit of in order to make things work. And after all that, yeah, still nothing. And now it was hideous. So I spell back to an old shuffle board since it had everything I need for this project, the sound I'll figure out later. And hey, look, motors are spinning. That's good. So let's get back to the code real quick. This project uses a very similar electronic architecture compared to my card shuffler, but the firmware is completely redone. So I've still got a Raspberry Pi Zero handling high-level logic, computer vision, and networking, and that's communicating with an Adafruit Feather to handle low-level things like moving the motors. So speaking of moving motors, have you ever wondered how you control a scara joint? Yeah, it's just a lot of my app. It's not that exciting. So if you look here, you can see as I move around the pen, both those arms are changing angles a lot, and those angles are basically what our stepper motors are controlling. 
So I had to write a few different algorithms for both doing forward and inverse kinematics, and then put it all together, debug, debug. I spent like three hours debugging, and then it eventually worked. And what I ended up with is a bot where you can send it simple G-code commands, and it would follow straight lines from point to point. All right, let's jump back to audio. So yeah, I just bought this thing on Amazon and plugged it into my Pi and then sound worked, yeah. One last thing, in order for this bot to actually be able to play tic-tac-toe, it needs to be able to see the playing board and see what the user's doing. The cat did better than you. So you guessed it, open CV time. Now, because I'm still really bad at computer vision, I did a very dumb method of reading the board. Like, really dumb. I'm, I'm sorry. The smart way would be to train a neural network to recognize handwritten X's and O's and give you the coordinates, but that's a lot of work. So what I did instead was just take an image before and after the user took their move, convert to grayscale, I did some transformations so it looks like the camera's directly overhead, which just helps with the math, and then I looked in the nine quadrants for whichever previously blank quadrant had the largest difference. And this indicates where the user took their move. No, it's not foolproof, but it works pretty well in this application. I then take wherever I think the user took their move, feed it back into an AI. That's right, I wrote a tic-tac-toe bot AI, and that will determine where the next move should be taken. Or if the bot needs to take some lethal action to... Uh, win yeah let's not talk about that all right so let's give this thing a shot game number one are you ready the bot starts off by drawing a game board and then taking its first move take your move it then waits for the user to take their move using the before and after images to figure out where they went and then feeds that back into the ai which does take a while for the bot's first move because there's a lot of potential outcomes to consider your move Your move. Alright, so in this case, I was a dum-dum. My first move was wrong, and the bot swiftly ended my career as a professional tic-tac-toer. That's a thing. Oh, so close. Your move. But what happens if I make a better defensive move? Take your move. Take your move. Take your move. Hey, is that Liam Neeson behind you? Uh... Maybe next time. Oh, okay. Um, let's give this another try. This time... I'm... I, I, <laughs> I swear. I swear I won't get distracted. Take your move. Your turn. Ha 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 ha, I win again. Maybe next time. Uh, uh... Fine, I give up. This is just a remarkable creation. Honestly, whoever invented this should win a Nobel Prize or something. Yeah, but all jokes aside, nope, sorry, one more joke. On top of just being a fantastic tic-tac-toe player, it even has a cat-friendly mode. So, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really does help. I also have a new Discord channel where you can get some exclusive project sneak peeks, talk with me and other fans, and some other stuff. Today I'm also launching a Patreon campaign to enable bigger, better, and more frequent projects. I've already invested in a nice-ish mic and camera, which the cat's loving by the way. But there's still so much more that I can do and so much more I can invest in projects, so with your help, let's make that happen. And finally, you can follow 3D Printed Life on Twitter and Instagram. Links for everything mentioned are in the description below. Thank you again for watching. Consider checking out some of my other new videos. I've got a few others like this, and there will be plenty more coming in the future. Until next time.